Eamon Khan here for seconds. It's a pleasure to be speaking to the mind of Barry McGuigan ahead of, well, we've just seen CBS defend his title against Matthias Masnak. Tough fight, attritional yeah. fight, as it yeah. always is with CBS. Well, what got him the victory tonight? But Eamon, it was always going to be an attritional fight mm. because of the clash of styles. Mm. It was a matter of, of um, you know, standing off and running the risk of getting and trying to outbox him, running the risk of walking onto that long right hand that Masternak throws. Or else put it on him, mm. put him under pressure, make him fight at an uncomfortable pace, hit him to the body just like he did, and really let it go and just stay on him. Run the risk of getting caught as you come in. Not clean. He got caught lots of good shots. But he, I thought he was winning the fight. Just about, maybe a round and a half ahead, mm. um, but he was he was breaking him up and he was he was killing him with body shots, really really hurt him. So it was only a matter of time. I think he would have dropped him with body shots because he, he really hurt him in round seven and round yeah. six with 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 a couple of look, left hooks around the side and right hooks to the body, and then he pile drive the right hand under his heart in round seven, and you could see him, oh, and all the air went out of him. So. You know, this guy doesn't quit unless he can't, he, he can't, uh, he can't fight. And he, he was genuinely exhausted. And I, you know, I don't want to see anybody getting hurt, but I would have loved to see him come out for round eight because CBS would have knocked him out. I was watching both you and Shane intently in between rounds, and both of you were calling for specific combinations. You yeah. more so than Shane. Yeah. Shane was Shane identified the pel the yeah. pelvis as a, yeah. as an area to target. But what were you specifically calling for in I between was rounds? Him to throw a right hook to the body and a right hook to the head because he kept circling into Master. They kept circling into the right hand, so looping the right hand over the top, and then left hook to the body, and then a right hook to the body, and lifting it, lifting the shots because you don't miss when you lift shots. You might glance off a target, but you'll always stick with something. Whereas if you throw it that way, chances are you bounce and go over his head. But he was hurting him with those shots. And every time he lifted them up the middle, Maslach just hated it. Just hated those body shots. And I could see that in round three, he hit him with a right hook on the temple and his legs went, boo, and Maslach's legs went. So it was, it, was, um, it was a brilliant performance. And although it was, you know, uh, the rounds were close and the fight was probably, and I could hear the guys behind me, uh, Spencer... Um, uh, uh, Spans, somebody else was he was with uh, Gareth, was Gareth, uh, Dar yeah. Gareth Davis and he was you know I was thinking what fight are you looking at you know and, and, and they were questioning you know he could, he could get hurt here whatever but we knew he could get hurt mm. but you know, this game is about taking risks and calculated risks knowing when to go in and, and step on a guy knowing when to stand off him knowing when to box knowing when to fight knowing when to put combinations together knowing when to finish with a left hook or a right hand you know, we know that, and that's why Shane is such a fabulous young coach. He knows how to make and, and CBS is just a wonderful kid, and he came to us never having won a national title, failed on two occasions, failed twice to get it on the GB setup. This is the greatest fingers up to those idiots that wouldn't know a left hook from a fish hook. And he, look, British, Commonwealth, European, and world title. So we are thrilled with him. And he's a, such an amazing kid, such a moralistic decent kid and he sets a, such a great example for our gym we, we just we just love him he's a, he's a great kid and we, we have the, the utmost respect for him Talking of calculated risks with the rise of CBS with the confidence he's gaining in his skill sets and his abilities do you feel that react Porter Coley unification fights do you feel that these fighters truly want those fights with him will step in the ring and, and not move out the way of those fights well, We're not you know, Chris I think I think Chris has earned the right to uh, to say I've never avo avoided anybody. He's fought everybody in the way, including uh, Riakpo. And we beat Riakpo. We didn't get it. We won that fight and we didn't get it. And we've got a score to settle with him. No question about that. But also Jay Apataya. And there's all sorts of rumours that he may be stripped of his title if he fights this guy, Ellis, whatever his name is, Oro. Um, I hope that doesn't happen because he's a great fighter. He's a very tough fight. And... Um, and we, of course, have ba Badu Jack, who doesn't want any part of us, but he's another one. And then there's uh, uh, Arsene Goulemarian, who's, well, who's also a, a terrific fighter. So there are loads of oppor uh, opportunities out there. And, um, you know, we're going to look at all of them and weigh them all up and then make a decision. But we've done a good job with Chris, and Chris has answered every time and delivered every time. And it was uncomfortable at times tonight. He was being caught with some shots, and I know the fight was close, and maybe some will have him behind, but we don't give a toss about those people who have him behind because we, you know, we listen to doubters all our lives and we keep kicking him into the, into the dust. You know, we know what we're doing. Uh, Shane is one of the best coaches in the world. 
in the world. He's really good at what he does. And, um, you know, nine world champions. He's 30, 35 years old, onwards and upwards. Very wide in the scope. I just want to ask you about a previous head in the gym that being Daniel Dubois taking on Jarrell Miller on the 23rd of December. Yeah. Do you feel it's a good fight for Daniel Dubois? Do you think he'll answer the questions asked of him repeatedly in the ring? First thing, Ger Gerard Miller should not be in the ring. He should not be allowed to fight. He's failed so many drug tests, and, and uh, you know I, he should not be allowed to fight. And I and look, we made this distinction before him and I talked to you about anybody's caught taking steroids out, never allowed back in again. So that's the first thing. But it's a tough fight for 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 Daniel, because Daniel, you know, you know he he lost to Usyk, and he was stopped, and it was humiliating for him. And there would be many people think, well, actually, you know, he gave in too easy. He should have carried on, blah, blah, blah. So it's not an easy fight. Can I ask, does AJ win that fight against Otto Wallen? It's not a tough fight. Mm. Otto Wallen's not a tough fight. Come on. It's an easy fight. Um, so, we, you know, we're not interested in anybody that isn't interested in us, Eamon. Um, he should have had him a long time ago. He should have come to us. But... Um, you know, that's his decision and therefore we, we're, not, we're not worried in the slightest. Shane will continue to produce champions over and over again. And we got, we've got loads of kids coming through the door. And um, so we just, onwards and upwards, we just keep doing it. Fair enough, I respect your opinion there. Just a, just a couple more, Barry, before I let you go, I apologise. Right. It's always a pleasure speaking to you. That's why I like to yeah. pick your brain on a couple of things. Uh, look, Tyson Fury versus Alexander Usyk. We're finally getting it next year, hopefully. Yeah. John Fury is called for is saying that there's a decline, maybe uh, some of his strengths, his attributes in the ring, maybe it's changed. But he's also saying that, that a change of styles might be warranted to defeat Usyk. Do you feel that way? He can change styles. He can't, I mean, uh, Tyson is tall and rangy, fast hands, uh, good fighter. Um, Chin is suspect, as we saw with Francis Ngannou. Um, and, it, you know, because of the performance against Ngannou, this fight's a much closer fight. So people are reassessing whether they think that maybe Usyk can beat him. So Usyk's quick, fast, fighting out of a low center of gravity for a tall, rangy guy that's always difficult. So it's a tough fight. Um, and of course he's disintegrating and, and not disintegrating, but you know his, his performances are starting to level off because he's what age? What age is Tyson now? So he's he's on, well, he's on the decline, and he's not body beautiful. You know he's never been body beautiful, but he's quick hands. He's a good fighter. Um, chin is I'm worried about his chin, but but Us Usyk is an exceptional talent, and he could be. He could, and that wouldn't at all surprise me. Barry, I'll end on Lee Cutler, who's joined the gym under the tutelage of Josh Pritchard. How do you feel he did tonight? He did well. He made it harder than he could have, uh, but he did a great job, and he won the fight, and it's a good start to him being in the stable. And for, for, uh, uh, for um, you know, just the fact that he's down here, that he can fight every time that Chris fights, it's great, and, and uh, you know it's great for Josh working the corner as the lead man. So it's good for him. He wants to start off his career uh, as being a lead coach, and, and and this was a good performance tonight. And he made heavy weather of it, um, Lee. He could have he could have got that guy out of there. He had him gone, you know, so many times, and and it was just a matter of walking him down and letting the shots go. Obviously, he would be walking into shots and possibly getting caught with counters, but. Every time he put pressure on him, every time he hit him with a single shot and then followed up with a combination, it looked like he was ready to go. So, um, what was his score at the end, as a matter of interest? Oh, so, it, one one scorecard was close, right. I think by a round or two, and the others right. were like by four rounds. Right, I think that's fair. That's a fair estimation. I thought he won it by three or four rounds. But, good performance, good start. Very pleasure's all mine, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you,